Today, my goal is to show you Belize. From the untouched jungles to the unchartered beaches. And I'll show you why I'm actually doing a little bit of property hunting here. And spoiler, it's happening. Let's uh. go! Let me show you why I became a property owner here in Belize. If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian, and right now I'm building a series of dream homes all around the world. I've currently got nine lost villas under construction here in Bali, Indonesia. I just opened my first lost home in Dubai. And for those of you that do know me, you might be thinking, Belize? Yeah. Belize. And it seems random even for me, but here's how it happened. You see, for the last few years, I've been traveling through Tulum and I really like the place. I think it's one of the most beautiful places on our planet. It's nice and close to my family being on the Western hemisphere. And so I really started looking to find a home there. In fact, I even made an offer, but when the offer was rejected, it made me pause. And when I took that pause, I realized that there was a lot of cons that came with the pros of Tulum. You see, investing in Tulum means for one, ownership in Mexico as a foreigner felt a little bit shaky and complicated. Secondly, the cartel activity is a serious problem and it's actually driving away a lot of business owners. As a tourist, you probably won't see it, but if you live there, you will eventually see the other side. And lastly, as an investor, it's a market that has already boomed. And honestly, it's hard to say what's left on the upside. But despite these cons, I dreamed of having a home in a place like this. And that's why, fast forward a few months, I got so excited when I received a DM from this guy. This is Will. I had never Never met Will, never heard of him, but when I got a message from him inviting me to come and explore Tulum's next door neighbor, Belize, I was like, I don't know much about this place, but given how close it is, I'm sure the landscape and the feel, it must be somewhat similar. He told me that not only is Belize one of the undiscovered frontiers, he said it's also a place that historically investors have done exceptionally well. I was intrigued. And so, as per usual, I got on a flight, flew across the world to go and hang out with a total stranger. And this is how it went. So this trip starts off just outside of Belize City. Where we're going though, is where I'm most excited about. Now I probably came with the best guide in all of Belize. This Welcome here is Belize, Will. Welcome to guys. Like Rejoined here with Zach. Heck yeah, man. What's up, man? Now, pretty much any trip to Belize will start off by landing in Belize City, which is the largest and most populated city. But most people don't typically stay there. So we quickly got on this little tiny plane and flew over to Ambergris Key. Ambergris Key. Ambergris Key. It's not, it's not, I'm thinking hamburger. Mm. I can't even pronounce the island. And this is where Will lives and has built out his business as an owner of the Remax franchise for Belize. But the thing that I couldn't help but notice is as we took off, just how small Belize city was. You see, in total, this country only has 400,000 people. And fun fact, they speak English, which considering where they're located is kind of strange because most of their neighbors speak Spanish. A smooth landing. Right now, we just landed the beautiful island of Ambergris Key. We're in San Pedro town. The island's 24 miles long, three miles wide. And this is gonna be the VIP exclusive tour only for all the loss of long people. Can't say much more than that. All right, here, this is stunning. Very, very simple from the exterior. And then you come in here and it's like modern, beautiful. I got the welcome pass to organize for you guys. Oh some my cheese, God. Cheese, some wine, beers. Such a warm, warm welcome. Very, like, thank you. After a long day of travel, you really don't find a nicer check-in than this one was. Later that night, I took an espresso shot, tried to wake up and headed to dinner with these beautiful people. Pretty much all of these people gathered around the table are Canadians and Americans that have traded in the cold for a much better life in Belize. And that's something I can 110% relate to because that's why I came to Bali. To our honorary guests today, guys, Zach and Christian, I feel so grateful to be here right now. Usually I'm visiting places, but I'm not really connecting with the people. And this is like the other way around. It's like meeting people first and then getting to know the area. And that's the best way to do it. So thank you guys. Welcome to the family. Let's go. Bring them in. Being invited into this inner circle felt very special. And I can say that even though it was just the first night, I started to feel like there might be more to Belize than just the blue water. Now, one thing you'll come to see on this trip is that Will is pretty much the most badass host in all of Belize, and he did not disappoint. The morning started off with an amazing meal and immediately heading out from a canal right in front of our home to this. And 15 minutes later, you're out in the middle of paradise, 
such a cool experience just hanging out here with Will and his friends and getting to see this very local, local style of travel. So how many days of the week look like this? Three. Three days a week. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. I'm already picturing my life here in Belize and I think I want it. So Toshi and Oni have basically made a little pop-up restaurant for us here just in the jungle. It's unbelievable. I can't think of a better place to celebrate. The sunny day, I'm with amazing people. And we got champagne. <laughs> hey! Hey! This is a roll that was designed, Toshi and Will together. They spent ages in the laboratory cracking up the best formula. It is so good. That's like so deliciously buttery. This is so much better than the floating breakfast in Bali. As the sunset started to hit, Will invited Zach and I to get back on the boat and go and explore our first set of investment properties. Just a few minutes away from this beach is a place called Secret Beach. Now, Secret Beach is an upcoming community built along this beautiful coastline. It has a few restaurants, a few bars, a couple upscale properties, and a few homes like this. That right there is called a Mennonite style home. It's rather simple in its style. It's actually up on stilts. Now, one thing I need to add is that these plots at the moment do not have utilities. 35000 dollars for the plot for the materials the labor and basically getting a full standing structure you're looking around sixty thousand dollars maybe ten to fifteen thousand dollars to get yourself solar panels and a bunch of other utilities that make this place efficient so just over a hundred thousand dollars and you have yourself a place here in Belize. These lots that today were are thirty-five thousand dollars. Well, five years ago they were starting at five thousand US. You're on an island, so you have island economics. You're ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. and there's already a track record and data pointing. This is where stuff's coming. We're actually going to go see another style of construction. <laughs> Kind of a more stylish and designer way to go with the prefab look. So again, the benefit being usually it's a little more affordable, but it's definitely a lot faster to get up and going. We have like a simple hardwood or even unit over here. They start at about 275. But most of all, Secret Beach is a lot of recently purchased plots. One thing I found very interesting about this area is that there's an upcoming development by the name of Habitat. And as you know, the thing that drew me to this region was the experience of Tulum. Well, there's about to become a bunch of these upscale Tulum style homes homes that I just find absolutely gorgeous. One of the great things about Secret Beach is that unlike Tulum, where there was zero urban planning, and trust me, if you've been to Tulum, you know all about those bumpy roads, the awful traffic, it's a nightmare. But with an area like this, a ton of planning is going into it to create the right roadways and structures to avoid the bottleneck that you see all across Tulum. The truth is, if I could have been there on day one to invest in Tulum, you better believe I would have, but that ship has set sail. Now my goal is to find the spot before it's the spot. And I saw a lot of potential here. The next day, we started our morning bright and early, grabbed some breakfast at a nearby resort. What do we have here, guys? What is this? It is an oil bath. Oil bath, that's, that's a great way to describe it. <laughs> so this right here apparently is a very traditional Belizean breakfast. It's a pitash pak. And basically you've got these really like fluffy pillowy breads. You're gonna poke a hole in it and then stuff it with the bacon, the eggs, the refried beans. Let's try it. Cheers. Kind of is. I'm all for Belizean food now. <laughs> Ruben is actually a bit of a talented man. He's a singer. Sometimes we put out music, sometimes the people listen, and it's a blessing. But right now we're in Belize and we're, we're getting lost. After an amazing breakfast, I headed to the motorboat because today we were going to catch our own lunch. Or at least we hoped. This is how we're catching today's meal. I know some of you guys are probably thinking, but isn't it wrong to be shooting fish? There's actually no commercial fishing off of the coast of Belize or in Belize at all. This is actually a really great way to enjoy Belize, and also get our next meal. Woo! We got food, we got food, we got food, yeah. So everything we speared is right in front of us here, all freshly prepared, a lot of lobster, a little bit of fish thanks to this guy right here. Nice shot. I'm a baby. Wait, wow, thank you, boss. This right here is a very serious crab cloth. It's trying to like tear it open, but Emmanuel came over, showed me how to do it. Doesn't get any fresh in that. Now, I swear, food just tastes a little bit better when you catch it yourself, but after that incredible meal, we headed back to Mahogany Bay, which is a gated community. And unlike Secret Beach, which has a lot of room to grow, a lot of developing to do, Mahogany Bay is quickly taking shape. They're about to have a pool club. It has a school. They have a hair and a nail salon. They've got an art shop. 
They have a yoga studio. They have amazing wildlife. Why are you running? They have a coffee shop. I recommend a coconut lunch here. Now I can see how Mahogany Bay will soon have mostly everything you could want in one place, but my question was still the same. Where would I live and how far would my money go if I invested today? So we hopped in Will's golf cart and he gave us a tour of the upcoming builds and homes in the area. Are these the plots of land that people would have bought? Exactly, so yeah. these are all 50 by 75 lots. If people want to do bigger homes, they can build up with multiple lots, but you can fit a pretty substantial home like the one we're about to walk into. This one right here is a duplex, and you can actually see it by going right here. It's basically the exact same building inverted on the other side. So you could rent them out separately as two units, or you could open it up. So this would be kind of medium to upscale finishing. We've got a lot of nice like wood finishes, it's cup some hardwood window frames that are manufactured here on the ad. You can actually get kind of like a turnkey home starting around 400K. Again, you are paying premiums to be in a gated community. And with that comes, of course, the ability to charge more on nightly rentals. So a lot of the homes that we've seen so far have had a bit of a colonial style to them. Right now, we're actually going into more of a modern one. Right here. One bedroom here on the right, one bedroom here on the left. You got these really beautiful wooden false beams that just add so much personality to the space. You got a walk-in closet right on the canal. What do you think this kind of place costs? In general, when you're looking at a higher end finishing like this place, I would just use the $175 to $200 per square foot metric and calculate based on the square footage of the house. Run that math, add the property value, that's your final cost. Now, truthfully, Belize is not the cheapest place I've ever come across. Building here is around mid pricing, but what has made this place so favorable for some investors is the fact that Belize is built up on common law. It means that whether you're a local Belizean or whether you're a foreigner, you are protected at the same level by Commonwealth law. It also means that no matter what passport you hold, you can own a home outright, and that home is your property for the rest of your life, your kids' lives, and whoever they pass it on to next. How hurricane proof are we here? This area is prone to getting some serious storms, and there was actually a hurricane that just came through a week ago. All of these wooden structures seem in perfect condition. They're actually built with hurricane straps. Big portion of Mahogany Bay is the owner's in complete control. So you get your lot, you choose your plan, you can customize the plan, and you're getting priced out directly from the best contractors in Belize. So everything is streamlined for owners in here. After touring the properties, we enjoyed the best thing about the way this community is set up. From Mahogany Bay into the middle of the ocean in like five minutes. But what I wasn't expecting was where we were just about to go snorkeling. So this is Holchan. And trust me when I say, this is one of the best dive sites on our planet. The amount of marine biodiversity absolutely blew me away. Every five seconds, it's a new species, it's a new set of coral, and it's an absolutely breathtaking experience. This is one of the most beautiful marine sites I've ever been to. I mean, the only thing I can compare it to maybe is is Raja Ampat in Indonesia. It's all protected here and you see it. Like the way the fish act around you, they're not even scared. I've never seen so much biodiversity in a single dive. Later that night, we celebrated another beautiful Belizean day by heading down to this restaurant at a local resort. And I gotta be honest, I started to feel something that I don't normally feel. I felt like I was a part of this community. I felt a sense of belonging and deep community, something I very rarely feel on my travels. So low key, maybe high key, I love these people. And the more time I spent here, the more I started to visualize this place as a home. Time of your life. Before flying to Belize, I thought my chances of getting a property or building a home here were about zero to 1%. But the way the first few days played out had me thinking, maybe there's a shot maybe five to 10%. But the reality was, if I was gonna see Belize as some form of a home, well, I couldn't base that decision off of just the island of Ambergris K. I can't even pronounce the island. It can be hard to say. Ambergris. <laughs> if this were to become home, I needed to better understand Belize. Luckily, Will's kind of a crazy tour guide, and he had an insane travel plan to show me so much of this country in a short span of time. So we hopped on a plane, landed back down in Belize City, and that brings us to this moment. If there was one thing that I was most excited about in this entire Belize trip, it was to see Will. But second to that, 
is that right there. Today, Will has set up a trip for us to go and explore the blue hole from above. And this hole is a world famous scuba site. But today, we have a totally different way of seeing it. And the crazy thing is, he's never done it before. Been to the blue hole, but the helicopter I've never done. <laughs> Guys, this is Gustavo, our pilot for today with Astrom Helicopters. So, let's start up the chopper. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have taken flight. God, dude, your view? It's amazing. Yo, Will, you want to go 50-50 on this island? Yeah, I'm in. Right side first. Oh! Here we go. I actually didn't expect it to be so circular. Crazy. Just flying over this region, you see some of the most incredible landscapes. This is one of the last natural sanctuaries of our planet. <laughs> Literally mid-air, we both panicked. We hear a door pop open. It's my fault, guys. You can't take me anywhere. With that checked off the bucket list, we still haven't seen so much of what makes this country so unique. There is a vast jungle across the country and 5,000 species that call it home. There are 900 of these ancient sites all around the country. So it was time to get away from the coastline, so we boarded a PJ. That means private jet if you don't know. I'm sorry, I had to do that. Careful checked. Uh, the door is locked. The other one was too. It was a cool moment. So we took a selfie with our pilot, as you do, and we landed down in Punta Gorda. So this is the airport. Customs should be pretty chill. Luckily, baggage claims ran pretty smoothly, and our next stop was to the Belize famous Copal Tree Resort. We've just arrived, and the second we drive in through Copal Tree's entrance, it's just like wilderness. There's trees, sheep, chicken. Are those guinea hens? There's howler monkeys that are going to be up here entering Garden of Eden. Hi, good evening. Welcome to Copal Tree Lodge. Here's a nice cool towel. Mm, this is amazing. It literally feels like we're in the set of Tarzan right now. Nothing but treetops and mountains. This place is deep in the jungle. And Will said the last time he stayed here, he actually saw jaguars up in the tree canopy. Gotta keep your head on the swivel. You never know. This is so stunning. You can hear all the sounds of the birds. I can hear some monkeys in the distance. This is deep immersion in the jungle. Wait, well, Luca, how did you describe Belize? Yeah, unbelievable, man. <laughs> no, this is a special place. Back to that barefoot living. I regret it now. Ouch. Wow. You can hear this like prehistoric dinosaur sound. That's the howler monkeys. It's basically our alarm clock for tomorrow morning. You've literally been one of the best tour guides ever. He's taken me from the island to the jungle, from the local to the luxury. What's your take on Belize? Like, where is the opportunity? A lot of people who call me and they say, well, you know, I wish I invested in Belize 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the reality is a lot of people 10 years from now will be saying the exact same thing, only it'll have been about today. We have full foreign ownership. You can have your name on the title of the property and you're in complete control. Will has an entire YouTube channel based around Belize. If you guys want to check it out, I will have his link down below. It's been yeah, man. the best thing ever to, to take a DM from a stranger and to see where it led me. You never know. <laughs> The final day. Yeah, it kind of sucks to say that. And it sucks even more because I'm not even in Belize anymore. But this was a really special part of the trip. From cascading waterfalls, endless wildlife, and the rich Mayan history, it was time to see what this part of the country had to offer. Buenos dias, chicas and chicos. What a beautiful day here in the treetops. Today we're gonna do two very important things when you're in Belize. You need to see a waterfall and you need to see a Mayan temple. So we're chasing waterfalls today, guys. So we've just arrived here at Lobantun. That's the, the entrance and there's nobody else parked, nobody else here. Looks like we're gonna have a private viewing. <laughs> so you can see guys, the mines were very concerned about safety, which I respect. <laughs> you know what they say, what good is history if we can't learn from it? There it is. This is like some Tomb Raider scene here. This is the true meaning of Belize, is getting lost and living life on the edge. 
I want to document this moment right here because it's a really special one. For one, I'm at this stunning waterfall, sharing it with nobody else other than amazing friends. But secondly, this was the moment I decided to become a landowner here in Belize. We're flying back to San Pedro, and I'm gonna have this guy show me where I might be building the next lost villa. We gotta get the perfect location here, guys. That moment at the waterfall was a critical moment. It was a moment that I realized this was not just going to be another one of the countries I've traveled. No, this was the beginning of a new home. With that, we boarded our flight, we flew right back to Ambergris, touched down, and headed to the Remax Belize office because time to make things official. It's happening. Like all important decisions in life, it's always important to consult a lawyer. So I'm gonna call in my legal specialist. Come on. I'm gonna need you to read this real quick. This is the moment it becomes real. To get started, only $35,000. Simplicity of it all, it's just so beautiful. I'm a landowner in Belize. With the name on the dotted line, it was official. I had signed the contract and I was now the proud owner of two plots of land. But where, you may ask? Let me show you. Does he still got it? We're out. Still got it. We almost lost the block. <laughs> Welcome to the future site of the Lost Villa Belize. Okay, well, uh, that's my plot. It's uh, some dirt, a bunch of bushes. I don't really know what you expected, but while it's not much to see today, this is actually the land where the Project Habitat is soon to start construction, bringing in a series of high-end Tulum-inspired homes into the area. And with the two plots I bought, this is quite likely going to be the foundations to the next Lost Villa. It's kind of crazy. It only took me four days in Belize with the right people to feel right at home. And with that, I'm leaving with my own little tiny piece of bamboo. Ambergris key, Ambergris key, Ambergris key, Ambergris, yeah, Ambergris key. The Ambergris K, mm. some amazing new friendships, and the beginning of a new foundation that I just can't wait to watch grow. Guys, if you liked this video as much as I loved making it, then please let me know. It really matters to me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if ever you want to get connected with Will, his amazing team, or learn more about this, then just check out that link down below. And as always, let's get lost again in the next one.